Hello friend, this is Rupesh and watching CPP Net video series on C++ and today's topic is this stream extraction and stream insertion operator overloading in C++. And yes, this is extraction and this is insertion and we use them in conjunction with this object called Cout and we use it like this, CPP Nuts. So this is the string and we are extracting this string and who is helping us to do that this c out this c out is nothing but the console output and this is just an object don't confuse with this this is nothing but just the object of o stream so this is a class and we have seen another thing like c in and this is let's call some x and this x is nothing but some integer x and we can take the value inside this. So what is this C in? This is also one object. And this is I stream object, not I scream. This is I stream. And these two classes are included in IO stream. That's why instead of taking O stream and I stream separately, we take only one header file, which is called IO stream. So I for, for input, O for output. So one more time, this C out is an object of O stream and this C in is the object of I stream classes. They are classes. So don't confuse with this. And we are going to overload these operators, not C out and C in, because I have seen people talking about like uh, overloading C in and C out operators or just simply they will say that okay overloading c out and c in but we are not overloading c out and c in we are overloading these operators so let's talk about these points now when we need overloading this and this when there is a scenario that we want to output like c out and then this extraction operator then user defined type what i mean to say is let's suppose you have some class test okay and you want to create an object of that and let's call it t and you want to output this object using c out this is not capital c don't get me wrong okay so as you can see that this is something what we don't do daily we will be using here some variable which is of implicit type like integer character pointer and all okay but here we are using this object so whenever we have something like this, like this kind of situation, we will go for overloading this operator. Okay. And similarly for C in. So right hand side, we should have a user defined data type. So let's quickly write the code and understand how we'll do that. And yes, there was this another point I forgot to discuss there. It says that it can't be class member function. I mean, these operators cannot be overloaded as a member function of your class because this c out is an object of o stream class not your class so if you don't understand this will come to this later you have to make it a friend function of your class so define it globally you will declare it a friend of your class okay so that it can access the private data members of your class so let's quickly write that so we have this class ready for use so test t we wanted this c in first we'll take the input and c out t this is what we want to achieve here but if you'll compile this let's do that you'll get so many errors that i don't know what is this i don't know what is this so let's give the definition of this operators first we will define them globally so let's go for c in first so as i said c in is the object of i stream we will be returning i stream reference c in sorry operator this is the operator we are overloading and we have to take two parameters i stream ref input we can call this input whatever it is i'll explain what is this but uh, let me write this first and then this test ref obj and what we will be doing here is just take the input 
obj.x and return input. So this is going to be the syntax for your stream insertion operator which will insert the stream in our system from console. So let's write another syntax for OStream. So this is going to return OStream ref again operator and this time this operator and here we'll take OStream ref and here we'll call this output output and then again test ref obj and in this output obj dot x let's have this endl and return this output so this is going to be the syntax for your output operator i mean stream extraction operator overloading so these are the functions and let me give this friend here so let's get a little lazy and just copy and paste these so what we are doing is we are creating a class so this is your class you want to output or input the object of this particular class so what you did you created two global operator overloading functions and you make them as friend why are you making these function as friend because they want to access this x and this x is a private data member of your class if you don't want to access any private data member of your class you don't have to make them friend function in your class okay because they're not going to access private data member so let's run this so here we'll compile this i have this code ready yeah it compiled successfully now let's execute this so this c in is asking you the value because this cn is calling this operator here so input you are asking the value here i'll explain what is this but let's just quickly see that our program is running see you give 25 you are getting this 25 using this c out here so this program is working fine now let's try to understand why it is working this way so first of all why we cannot make this function as a member function of your class the reason is this c in and C out are not the object of our class. They are object of different class. And we are overloading these operators on those particular classes. That, like C in is the object of I stream. So this operator will be overloaded for that particular class. And similarly for this operator, it is going to be overloaded for O stream class, not for your class. So what we did, we overloaded these operators for their classes only. See, we are passing the references of their own type. Okay, see, even this one. And there we are passing our own object as the second parameter, this one. So this is how the syntax goes. These classes, this C and C out are the object and they are not our classes object. We cannot create these functions member of our class. So then let's try to understand how this calling is working. So when you're writing C in and this stream insertion operator and T, it is something like this. So when you give something like this to the compiler, compiler is changing it into something like this, not the actual thing, but I'm giving you just the example here. So this is your function and compiler will call that function like this. So this line will be replaced. And similarly, this line will be replaced like this t okay that's why we ended up calling this function and this function so this much is clear now and why we are taking them as a reference because we don't want to create copy of these objects we want to use these object as it is no need of copying them because it will create temporary objects and we don't want that so we are taking them as a reference here 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 and here so this part is done now what we are doing is see you, your C in has become input. So input stream insertion operator and object dot X. Ultimately, you are writing something like C in and then this operator and object dot X. Exactly. This is how you write when you take any input, right? And after taking that, I mean, after taking the input from the user and inserting it into this X, we are returning this particular input by reference and similarly for this output so we'll talk about this later now why we are re returning this as a reference 
The reason is here you might not only use it like this, you might use it like this also like C in and then this T and then another let's call it T1 or another one with some X and this X is maybe integer. So they all can be different different type. It, it doesn't really matter, right? So your first call, I mean this is going to be your first call and then it will call this function. We did our job, we took the input from the user and inserted that input into this X. We are coming back using the same reference. See, we are not making any copy after copying this input here. So what we took, we are just returning it back. So as we are returning, this whole thing will be replaced with C in. Okay. And then this C in and this operator, we will again call this particular function, but we'll pass this T1 this time here. Okay. And we'll do the same thing here. Then instead of this, we will have C in again because we are returning from here. And then using this operator and using this C in, we will pass this X, but not in this function because this X is, I said, integer. So this I stream class, this is IO stream. So I stream class is there. It already have the overloaded function for integer values manipulation or working. Okay. So do, we don't have to do anything for this. We only have to take care of these type because this T is our user defined data types object. This is why we return by reference. We don't want to make the copy of this C in again and again because it is of no use. And similarly for this. So I think we are clear here why we use these operator overloading because we want to use this C in and C out with our own created objects. I mean own types. Okay. This is not integer or something and why we cannot overload these operators in our own class because we are overloading these operators on C in and C out and they are not our object. If you remember if you have seen those videos of mine uh, there is this class called point and this is the object p1 and let's suppose okay leave it it doesn't have anything there are three objects p1 P2 and P3 and what you want to do is you just want to copy P2 plus P3 into this P1. So what you're doing here is you're adding two objects. So that time what we did we created this operator overloading as a member function of your class and this particular object was calling that function and we were passing this as the parameter to that function. And we were returning type point and here we cannot do that because this C in and C out doesn't belong to our class. So that's why we have overloaded them globally. I think we are so clear and if you have any doubt, please let me know. And if I miss something, please tell me that so that I can create another video or I can highlight that comment so that viewers can get the most benefit of this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for upcoming videos like this. Bye-bye.